Oh, I want to thank the Jones family and the entire Cowboys organization for this opportunity, as well as my friends, family, teammates, and fans for their support. While this is disappointing, I will take the lessons I learned here in Dallas and continue to fight for an opportunity to prove that I can play every Sunday. Mm. That was Michael Sam's message. Garrett said that Sam was a hard worker in practice, and he still needs to continue to work on his skills. So perhaps another opportunity for Sam in the future. But as for now, uh, your reaction, Skip Bayless. Stephen A. Smith, you know all too well I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. Mm -hmm. And as a Cowboy fan, I was surprised and disappointed when I heard this news yesterday. Uh, scratch that, I was shocked and disappointed. Mm -hmm. I've said many times on this show, when Michael Sam was at Missouri, I loved him as a high motor pass rush specialist who always jumped off my TV screen. And all he was was the SEC co-defensive player of the year. No small accomplishment. And by the way, when he did get late in, get into games late for the St. Louis Rams preseason games, mm -hmm. he had three high motor sacks in the preseason. Six tackles wow. in one game. Not bad. So I accepted the fact that the reason the Rams could not keep him was clearly they were loaded most at his position. And out of nowhere came that undrafted free agent that we talked about, Ethan Westbrooks, who became the rising star of their training camp as a defensive end. So I thought, okay. They had just too many better defensive ends. He's on the market, and he's a steal for my Dallas Cowboys. What was I most concerned about with my Cowboys coming into the season? Biggest weakness, no pass rush. Continues to be their biggest weakness, no pass rush. They have now seven sacks tied for third worst in the National Football League. Only two by defensive ends. So silly me. I thought Michael Sam could take six or eight weeks to learn under Rod Marinelli, maybe the greatest teacher of defensive ends going right now in the National Football League. And maybe by week 9, 10, 11, Michael Sam could give my Cowboys a little high motor pop as a defensive end specialist pass rusher down the stretch. So, Stephen A., I sit back and I say, okay, I get it that he's undersized and I get it that he's not the biggest guy or fastest guy or strongest guy or most agile guy, but I thought he's one of those guys who, when the lights were brightest, played at his emotional best. Maybe he was a better game player, and we've seen this before and brought it up on the show before, better in games than he ever was in practice. But I'm going to have to accept now he just didn't show them enough in practice to hang on with the Dallas Cowboys. And I am... I think this is actually a loss because I thought it was going to be a steal. I think that um, I can respect and appreciate your position, but I, and, um, I think you're wrong. I think you're missing the boat on this, Skip Bayless. Uh, in the end, what it comes down to is this. I'm not surprised at all uh, because Michael Sam, once he was cut by the St. Louis Rams, wasn't going to be a part of the NFL, at least for right now. You had a lot of people who don't believe he was ready. Um, I've always maintained the position, and although uh, I'm sure Jerry Jones will be on the record in disagreeing with me, I'm sure the NFL will be on the record in disagreeing with me, I have always been of the position that Jerry Jones took Michael Sam on the Dallas Cowboys as a favor to the NFL. Um, the NFL is something that they denied, but if you recall, Skip Bayless, when the Dallas Cowboys picked him up, I came on the air and I talked about how I was hearing uh, that there were people in the NFL League office that had called teams mm -hmm. and essentially let them know no, nobody was prodding anybody, nobody was trying to force anything, but they were essentially encouraging teams to give Michael Sam a chance because obviously the NFL are forward thinkers, uh, they're liberal-minded, and, and, and clearly this is something having the first actively gay professional football player, uh, they believe the time has arrived for that. And, and obviously we all agree with that. You should be judged on your performance, on your ability to play the game, not on anything else. And you didn't want to get the impression or you didn't want the NFL to have the image as being a league where teams would be willing to ostracize mm -hmm. a particular athlete uh, because of their sexual orientation. And so as a result of that, when he got uh, let go, by the St. Louis Rams. Uh, it was a situation where you had a lot of teams that didn't want to touch him. 
and the NFL, from what I was being told, was a bit fearful that the imagery would be that of a league, uh, not the league office, of course, but a league mm -hmm. that essentially wasn't embraced, wasn't willing to embrace a first openly they gay player. They didn't want to touch him because of yeah. sexual orientation or because or, or, he the, just the, wasn't good enough? The, 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 I'm saying that's what I, I was hearing, that there was a reluctance. What I'm saying to you is that I came on this show and I said that that's what I was hearing, and that's what you had. That's why you had people from the league office calling. Some okay, teams, but again, right? Because of sexual orientation, or because he just wasn't good enough to You're make any roster. You're asking that question. Yeah. I'm saying, what I'm, is? Yeah, which I, I'm saying to you that there were people, that I, I was being told that there were folks that were a bit reluctant for whatever reason. That, and, I, and I don't even want to say the sexual orientation. Okay. Just the news and the hype and everything that came with it. The distraction. In the event. It, the bottom line is, it, what else would there be a distraction for if it were not for him announcing that he was gay? So my point to you is that I never suspected that he was going to make the Dallas Cowboys. I never suspected that he was going to last a full season with the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, I believe that Jerry Jones being not, and it wasn't for hype on the part of Jerry Jones or the Dallas Cowboys in any stretch, even though usually it is in this particular instance, it was Jerry Jones, I believe, I personally believe doing the league a favor by making sure somebody grabbed Michael Sam, at least on their practice squad, so it was a story that would go away. Now, that's not to say that the Dallas Cowboys was not going to give him a chance to perform, let him practice, see what he has, etc. because we all know they have issues in terms of sacking the quarterback. But at the same time, the bottom line is, is that there were not a whole bunch of suitors out there willing to open the floodgates to give Michael Sam a chance even to enter their practice squad. And this is the co-defensive player of the year mm -hmm. in arguably the number one football conference in America. Now, we can all gauge as to why, what the reasons behind that may have been. I don't know that for a fact, but I do know that you heard people mumbling in NFL circles about how they didn't want that kind of distraction. So in the end, what it comes down to is that Jerry Jones did the league a favor by taking Michael Sam on in the first place. Do I believe he can play in the NFL? Yes. Do you believe he can play in the NFL? Yes. Do we believe that he's somebody that should have fallen to the seventh round, the 249th pick, if I remember correctly? Absolutely, positively not. So, one would surmise or one would ask, why did you fall that low? And if you fell that low, could the same reason that you fell that low be the same reason why a lot of teams weren't willing to open their gates to welcome you in? Jerry Jones steps in. He does that for the NFL. But now that all of these days have passed and it's over with, mm -hmm. here we are with Michael Sam once again not making an active okay. NFL roster and in this case not even making the practice squad. Look. I can't say you're wrong about your premise here, that Jerry Jones did this as a favor to the league, as a short-term favor to the league. Sure. That, that his time would run out quickly in Dallas. I can't say you're wrong. I just disagree with that premise. Yeah. And it's simply because of football and the desperation this team has at rushing the passer. And what week, this, this could be the most glaring week of all, where you don't cut Michael Sam. They sacked Eli Manning zero times they touched him in the game one time yeah come on now you're ladies, saying that they need him oh at some la point la la ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. let me be very very clear about something i am in no way trying to imply that jerry jones took him and he wasn't going to have the opportunity to compete and show what he could do i'm saying to you that if you don't make the practice squad, even though it's for St. Louis, and the fact that there was reluctance on the part of other teams to bring him on board before Jerry Jones grabbed him, clearly there were people that didn't think he was worth the trouble because of his football talent, meaning the distraction that he mm -hmm. would be. I don't want to say distraction because yeah, I don't, think, I, I, I don't yeah. think he's, dis I don't think he's right a distraction. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is that yeah. the news, you know, the attention. Yeah. There were a lot of people that didn't want, a lot of teams that didn't want okay. that because they believe his football prowess may not have warranted that. Okay. Jerry Jones was willing to give him that opportunity. He didn't cut the mustard. But in the end, what it comes down to is that yep. the reluctance that took place to begin with was factually proven mm -hmm. by the fact that he fell to the seventh round. Mm -hmm. He is the co-defensive player of the year in the SEC. Don't tell me that this brother can't play some football. This dude was in the preseason, had six tackles in one game. You know, had about two or three sacks over the preseason. He showed an ability to rush the passer. Don't tell me that he can't make a practice squad. Mm -hmm. Yet there was reluctance in bringing him on board. So when Jerry Jones did it, 
And you learned, and we ultimately learned that Troy Vincent was one of the guys calling yeah. around the league. Mm -hmm. The fact is, in the end, you had a league that wants to ingratiate itself with the Michael Sams of the world and to show how forward they can okay. How does this... But, okay, 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 real wait, quick but, thought. Okay, quick. go, because I want to ask a question, because okay. you brought up a point, and we need to address it. Okay, but it. you go brought on. up distraction. I, I have to give this young man full credit, because through his days in Dallas, and we're talking about media distraction, he did do an opening media session. And that was it. Which was unusual for a practice squad player, but this was Michael Sam, and we know why that was. Now, right. I, I think we're all totally fine with that. From that moment on, to, from, from all I've gathered, my information, he declined every interview from that point forward. He became just another practice squad player. So there was no big media distraction on his part in Dallas. Right. But what y'all are missing is that when we say a distraction, that doesn't mean it's his fault. It could be other people wanting to bring that attention. It could be other teams surmising that this is going to happen and being a oh, bit okay. presumptuous in their thinking. Nobody's okay. blaming Michael Sam. No one said you were blaming Michael Sam, and he's not a distraction. But what? How